Iceland has preserved their last Big Mac as a historical artifact. An activist tries to save a transgender cow, and Kim Jong-un has a bizarre rule to protect his sacred feces. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. My name is Jonesy, and your name is... uh, What is your name? Iceland preserves the last Big Mac meal as a historical artifact. McDonald's may seem ubiquitous, but there are some places in the world where you'd be really hard-pressed to find the golden arches. For instance, in Iceland, did you know? The country's three McDonald's locations closed their doors in 2009. Still, the memory of this fast food chain lives on through an artifact that's been displayed across the country. A 12-year-old Big Mac. This Big Mac was purchased by Khajurtur Smarasan uh, on October 30th, 2009, one day before the locations closed in Iceland. He then found the bag with a Big Mac and fries in his garage three years later, believe it or not. Completely untouched, even though mice had seemingly chewed up everything around it. Not the greatest endorsement for the appeal of the food. And the state of the food after all that time seems a bit worrying as well. According to Smarasan, quote, It looked like I bought it just 15 minutes earlier. Same with the fries. It all looked new. Just kind of turned cold on the way home. <laughs> well, That's very alarming, by the way, that a Big Mac, after three years, still looked like a Big Mac. What are we putting in our bodies, guys? But, oh, the fries are irresistible. McDonald's fries are irresistible. Questions about the makeup of these items aside, Smarasin correctly decided that this was a piece of history, this Big Mac. Something that the entire country would need to see and experience. The mint-conditioned meal first went on display at the National Museum of Iceland for a year. Then it spent a few years at the bus, ho- bus hostel Reykjavik, and now lives in the Snotra House in southern Iceland. Uh, very funny that this Big Mac is a piece of history being shuffled around the country so people can see it. As, as though they've never seen one, I guess. But, uh, I mean, if you don't travel out of Iceland, I guess you're not going to see one. So, uh, to the locals, this might be very fascinating. <laughs> it says here, while you might see a handful of known fast food joints in Iceland, The prices at places like Taco Bell and Subway are much, much higher than in in the States because of rising import prices and the deflation of Iceland's currency, called the krona. When McDonald's first came to the country in 1993, it was seen as a huge step for Iceland entering the modern global world. Its closure, in turn, was a very devastating blow. That complicated history with McDonald's makes the Big Mac even more valuable to understanding Icelandic culture. This article ends with a quote from that guy, Smarasin, who bought that burger all those years ago. I don't think not eating a hamburger is the most remarkable thing I have done. But if you do an image search for my name, you will most likely see pictures of an old hamburger. Next time you forget about your value meal, guys, don't be quick to toss it out. You just might make some history. This is pretty crazy in that there is no McDonald's in Iceland. It just seems... Difficult to wrap my head around, considering McDonald's is moving into, like, the Amazon jungle, for crying out loud. I mean, is there a McDonald's in Iquitos? I'll bet you there is, if I was to look that up. It just seems like McDonald's goes everywhere. I mean, if we had a a small colony on Mars, I feel like McDonald's would somehow push its way through and into the environment. (laughs) So... The fact that it doesn't exist in Iceland is just... Even in the capital, I mean, just blows my mind. Uh, what is your favorite McDonald's treat? Uh, I've expressed it a few times on this show. I really like the nuggets with the sweet and sour sauce. I go crazy for nuggets with sweet and sour sauce. If I'm when I'm depressed, I uh, and there's no uh, chemicals around to snap me out of it. I, I I confess I'll at times go get a ten piece nugget and sweet and sour sauce, and then for a little while I'm extremely happy. Call the show six four six four five zero twenty twelve. By the way, do I have any listeners in Iceland? An activist is trying to save a transgender cow from slaughter. 
a Polish artist and vegan LGBT activist named Christina Wojciechowicz. Wojciechowicz. I think I nailed it. Christina, for the sake of the story, I'm going to call her Christina. She called the cow's experience, quote, a story of transphobia so profound that it transcends species. Apparently this cow's feelings were hurt. Let's find out how. Uh, Christina wrote that the cow was born a twin and due to a birth defect, has the appearance of a bull rather than a heifer and is unable to reproduce. So sad. As a result, the owner of this cow, who isn't being named, was slated to sell the the cow to a beef processing plant. I'm having a hard time getting this up. Okay, so the owner was going to sell the cow. Don't they usually sell them anyways to beef processing plants? Yeah, you know. The destiny of a cow these days is not so, uh, you know, rosy. Christina is attempting to raise some funds to purchase the cow and rescue it. How much do cows cost? The activist says the cow's owner called her transphobic names and that she was brought to tears when she heard of the creature's ordeal. Oh, no! The cow's feelings were hurt. and This woman was crying about it. Does she have proof of this, by the way, that the owner called the cow transphobic names? I want want to see this on video. (laughs) The The cow's owner hurting the feelings of the poor cow. Oh, these activists, I, ah, this uh, is just very, very peculiar behavior to me. I mean, aren't there children living in tents right now? Human children, and this is how you're spending your resources. I'm going to raise money to save this cow. This cow's feelings were hurt. Well, this Polish activist tried to get some attention on this case, and, and it worked. This case has gained widespread attention in Europe, the Polish Meat Cattle Breeders and Producers Association president, Jacek Zarzecki, even shared his opinion, saying that the cow has what is known in veterinary, veterinary science as free martinism, which is a type of intersexual defect commonly seen in cattle twin births. In these cases, a cow's reproductive system is often underdeveloped and a heifer might have a masculinized appearance. Uh, you might find that heifer uh, might also wear Carhartt, and um, Air Jordans, this, this sort of thing. To ha! <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to find the jokes in here. Uh, okay, yeah. So this happens. It's a scientific situation affecting the reproductive system. I mean, clearly, I'm not saying the cow is, doesn't have this condition. I'm just saying that. So what? <laughs> like, I don't know. This happens in nature. Uh, you know. There are birth defects. They're a thing. They happen in humans as well. In fact, there's probably a lot of kids with birth defects that could use some of this widespread attention that the cow has right now. I mean, there's probably kids with some cleft lips that need a home right now that we could probably help with the with the proceeds that have been raised to help this cow feel better. I don't know. We're going to provide some therapy sessions for the cow as well. Christina, what is your plan here? The president of this Meat Cattle Breeders Association uh, adds that the belief that a cow could be transgender, though, is pretty absurd, which is what this woman is saying. Wow, this woman has raised 6,000 zloty, and, uh, which is about 1,500 USD, to buy the cow at a price slightly higher than the normal cost would be in Poland. So she's going to buy the cow, it looks like. Well, all right, hey, if this makes you happy, you're going to buy a cow, you know, do your thing. <laughs> you know, but, you know, walking around telling everybody that this cow is a transgender, I mean, we just, you're spreading misinformation. <laughs> it's just like, come on, man. It's, well, maybe you disagree with how I'm reacting to the story. Uh, call my show, 646-450-2012. Uh, I'm going to get a steak. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man.
The leader of North Korea has a very bizarre rule to protect his sacred feces. Mr. Kim is believed to take his own personal toilet with him everywhere in armored vehicles. Did you know this? Kim Jong-un brings his toilet with him in armored vehicles. He has said that he doesn't trust the public toilets in case his feces fall into the wrong hands. This sounds like a severe case of paranoia, but maybe he has a good reason for this. For this, Let's find out. Sources close to the ruler's dynasty have said it would be unthinkable for Mr. Kim to use a regular public bathroom. They said that his feces must be overseen as his feces contains information about his health status. Yeah, I think we can look at this tubby mofo and guess the kind of health status he's running around with. I mean, I don't need his feces. <laughs> This guy, this guy clearly likes burritos. That's why he invented them. Oh, boy. I think I just crossed the line there. If I don't get canceled for the previous story, I'm going to definitely get assassinated for this one. Uh, it says here, the leader's personal facilities are supervised by his bodyguards. Oh, he's got some bodyguards that are just on poop duty. <laughs> Imagine being a poop guard. <laughs> Hilarious. You got to protect the toilet. Uh, they probably get paid well, though, right? Uh, and they're the only ones that get to see his precious poop. It says, anyone caught using his personal facilities could be sentenced to death. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. He put people to death for less than that. And now, it is believed that one of the convoys um, Mr. Kim uses uh, featured a private loo when he went to Singapore. Uh, what is this? I'm sorry. Anyways, that didn't come out right. Moving on says here he has his own facilities on his heavily armored train, which takes him around North Korea and international destinations such as China, Russia, and Hanoi, where he had to have a showdown with Mr. Trump, February 2019. They had a poop off. Got, I'll bet you my poop's in worse shape than your poop. <laughs> I don't think your poop could be as bad as Donald Trump's poop. Oh, he's got so much Adderall floating around in his poop. You could probably eat his poop and get so high, I'd imagine. Well, that's a strange thing to, to say. Well, this is a strange podcast. It says here some of his uh, portable loos are pretty extravagant. When he traveled to Singapore in 2018, he had armored Mercedes that uh, contained his his sacred throne. <laughs> the sacred. I want to see a picture of this throne that he uses. I think it's, I think it's made out of gold or dead Korean baby slaves? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? <laughs> it says here, believe it or not, intelligence agencies have actually previously attempted to get hold of some of his stool samples. They've tried to get stool samples from various leaders to examine their state of health. Yeah, what do you think Biden's stool looks like? She's got... <laughs> <it's> got <laughs> I think he's got a bunch of ginkgo biloba residue in there because that guy can't remember to stay awake. That guy, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> I'm going to guess uh, Biden's got a lot of Metamucil in his diet. It's, uh, you don't want a backed up leader of your country. That's for sure. You want to make sure your president is very regular. So I hope our leader is regular. And if you're in North Korea, you want your leader to be regular and imagine a regular leader is a happy leader that makes good decisions. Am I right, guys? Come fly with me. We'll float down to Peru. In Lama Land, there's a one-man band, and he'll toot his flute for you. Come on, fly with me. I'm going to record the outro. A little Frank Sinatra sliding up in there. It's one of my favorite Frank songs. I've done that song at karaoke many times. If I ever visit your town... And I crash on your couch. I record an episode in your closet. Uh, I'm going to request that you take me to the local watering hole for karaoke night. And we're going to have such a time. Oh, believe me. It'd be great to just go visit the weirdos, the big time listeners of the show, and record a podcast episode in your closet and then go to karaoke with you. That'd be fabulous. We'll call it the karaoke podcast tour. Uh, this might be a terrible idea. I got some lovely reviews that rolled in over the weekend on Amazon. People stepped up their game. 
they saw that Jonesy was getting all these terrible reviews and they're like, you know what? I'm going to go give Jonesy five stars right now. That's how I'm going to contribute to his well-being. And I appreciate all of you who did. I'm going to read some of these. The first one's from Rebecca Bullock, who, who I'm going to see someday in Texas. Her and Glenn. She writes, fun for the weird and the not so weird. Five stars. Jonesy offers up the strange and bizarre actions of our fellow humans in a delightfully amusing manner. Sometimes the best part of the show isn't the news itself, but rather Jonesy's reaction to the news. People do strange things. Jonesy gives us his take while he fills us in on the newest weird news from, from around the world, and especially the state of Florida on Fridays. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I appreciate that. Also, Jeanette left me a five-star review. The title is Love This Podcast. Every morning I listen to this podcast to start my day laughing. Love Florida Fridays and the weird stories. I love you, Jeanette. Thank you so much. She's got a lovely picture of her cat, too. Jeanette, nice cat you got there. Christine Cloud left me a five-star review. It's titled Love. She writes, okay, first question. The people that are leaving messages, are they for real? Because they are in a world of their own and probably should be featured on your show because they are weird AF, LOL. Anyhow, you're awesome. You start my day every day, Jonesy. Thanks for everything you do. Thanks for what you do, Christine, taking the time to write a five-star review for me. I appreciate that. That tells me that you appreciate the show and you listen. Um, you want to know if those messages are for real, for real from, a, from the callers? Yeah, they're real. These are real people in the world. Yeah, and they're just as weird as me. That's why we're all friends. Jackie also left a five-star review. She wrote, Starts the day off with some, start the day off with some lightheartedness. I listen to this podcast after the conventional news podcasts so I can get a laugh after all the grim content. I love to hear what he finds and his take on it. He's witty and it makes me smile. Not a bad way to start off the day. Thank you so much, Jackie. I'm so grateful that I can help you start your day on a good note. Yeah, after you listen to that grim content, yeah, taking a dose of Weird AF News and smile. All right, we have a, a review from someone beautiful named Chris. I don't know, I guess I have a very small thumbnail I'm looking at, but she looks very... Very attractive. Five stars. She writes, I enjoy the odd stories. Five stars. She says, I enjoy that Jonesy takes the time to do the weird AF news. He also asked us to give him some good reviews. So here it is. Seriously, I listen every morning. I'm, I'm so grateful, Chris. Thank you for taking the time. And listening to me when I requested some good reviews. Well, uh, the one after her, though, not so good. Someone named Ronell Chambers wrote, In my opinion, you're not, you're not funny. But you have a vibe, and that's why I continue to listen. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you giving me some, giving me some rope to hang myself with. Uh, Renell continues with, Hoping one day you might have something good to talk about. <laughs> okay, this is a strange... This review took a turn. <laughs> something. Hope you might have something good. I love how you listen every day. You continue to listen, but you still only give me one star. That doesn't make any sense. You seem like a very conflicted individual. I continue to listen, but I'm hoping one day you might have something good to talk about. <laughs> As in what? I'm, you know, I'm bounded by the weird news out there. That is, that is the limit. <laughs> that's whatever news I get, that's what I get. And I'm taking them from the mainstream n weird news sites. It's not like I'm, <laughs> you know, it's just what I'm doing. There's not other weird news out there that I'm not, that I'm ignoring. Uh, this person writes, what I'd suggest that you do is less unnecessary talk and give us more weird news instead of just three. No, this person's just... <laughs> I love it. People got something for free. You get free entertainment here. And you're like, I just wish you'd do more of it. Just do three. Well, you know, you can always go read weird, weird news on your own, Ronell Chambers. You don't have to listen to me. I didn't come to your job or your home and say, here's some weird news. Listen to it now. I'm the one. Listen to it. You can go get weird news yourself. It's everywhere. Believe me, it's everywhere. I can send you some links to some Twitter accounts you could follow. They just pump out weird news stories all the time. And you can just sit there and read them on your smartphone. You don't need me if you don't like what I'm saying, what I'm doing. <laughs> she also writes, uh, when I first saw this, I thought, okay, some weird news. Then I'd find funny, but it's not. It's mainly talking and talking crap about people, which isn't good. Do research. Pull some out of some of the out of this world news that would shock us and still be funny. Yeah, the, I'm using the weird news that's out there currently from the week. I don't know where you think I'm going to get weirder news than this, honey. <laughs> like, she says, uh, make the news into your style, but don't overdo it. I love how she's giving me all these pointers. I've been doing this for over a thousand episodes. I don't need any tips at this point, Renell. The the podcast, I'm sorry to say, is successful. She, and then she ends with, please give the Floridians a break. Not nice, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Give the Floridians a break. Not nice, man. Okay, okay. I'm just going to close up shop, Rennell, because uh, cause your advice so so helpful. <laughs> Not nice, man. All right. It's like everybody loves Florida Fridays, except for this ind- this idiot. Okay, Misty Dawn gave me five stars. Uh, she writes, listening to Jonesy this morning, and he shared some bad reviews, which compelled me to find this podcast here on Amazon and put my two cents in. I look forward to Weird AF every morning when, when my Google Assistant plays the daily news for me. Even though nothing that is reported helps helps stay current on world events, Jonesy makes me smile, if not laugh out loud, on a daily. If you want something to lighten your mood after hearing what's going on in the world, I would recommend this podcast. Thanks, Jonesy, for making every day a little better. Thank you, Misty Dawn, for leaving me that lovely review, giving me the five stars. Rhonda Shearer also gave me five stars. She wrote, fun in my flash briefing. I needed to add content to my morning flash briefing, but am tired of listening to the mainstream news. Weird AF is a lighthearted, often silly way to pass a few minutes every morning. Thanks for the upbeat delivery and Weird AF stories each day, Jonesy. Definitely an improvement over morning monotony. Thank you, Rhonda, so much for leaving that review. It's really, really gracious of you. I appreciate your time. I got Liss here. She left me five stars as well. She wrote, the most human and approachable funny guy I know. This guy is hilarious. Is Oh, I'm sorry. This guy is a hilarious way to start the morning. Maybe it's not everyone's taste, but he does awesome Monty Python accents. Whoop, whoop. I'm not sure about the rest of his accents, though. They're probably horrible. Yes, Liss, they are horrible. She says, I can't wait to hear him try a rally English accent from Finland. Um, yeah, I'm going to try that. Oh, this is Lisa. I know who this is, Lisa. Yeah, your review came through. No, I watched those videos of that accent. I can try it. Uh, She wrote, he brings up weird stories that sometimes also appear on mainstream news and makes them sound funny, but he also engages the audience personally, so once you start, you're stuck with them. Go away, bad rating people. She wrote, go away, bad rating people. No, they're not going to go away, Liz, because they have nothing else to do. They have no friends. Uh, Five stars from Leslie Sowell, S-O-W-L, cool last name. Leslie Sowell wrote, uh, offbeat and silly humor. I love starting my day with this guy. The news is weird. He's funny and silly. I find myself with a giggle every morning. Thanks. And good luck with your life, man. <laughs> good luck with your life, man, Leslie. Leslie, you get a good luck with your life, man. Shout out. Just start giving people good luck with your life, man. Shout outs. I appreciate those five stars, by the way. I got more five stars from Beverly Sills. She wrote, I love this podcast. It's really nice to chuckle every morning, Monday through Friday. Really better than mainstream media. I love that. It's just very short crisp review but it gets right down to the point better than mainstream media yeah man i appreciate you beverly thank you so much i'm glad that my podcast is making you chuckle every morning it's pretty cool sometimes it doesn't i'm sure but you know i do my best uh okay then i think that's that's the last of it oh no alexander did i already cover his alexander with an i I a l i x i believe i did he wrote awesome love florida fridays look forward to them Every week always has me laughing. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you so much for the positive reviews that rolled in, guys. I appreciate that. Keep them coming, man. They're great. I'll give you a lovely shout out when I, when I read your name on the show as well. Um, anyways, it's just very nice to hear people step up and come to my defense. That's really what this is about. And I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Uh, I, f- I feel the love when you do such things. And I'm, I'm grateful. Nothing I've ever tried to do in my life was ever really loved and this this show seems to be and uh so i'm grateful that you've shown me that love and uh, i appreciate you all supporting the show with a review super cool uh, i want to mention that i i recorded a video today where i answered all those questions the jonesy ask me anything video will be uploaded on the patreon today if you'd like to watch that video it's about 45 minutes uh some weird questions in there by the way i have to say you guys really you guys really when i said ask me some some weird personal questions. I got a few. I did. Pretty cool. Uh, the Patreon is patreon.com slash weird AF news. You can join there. You can also download the Patreon app and search for weird AF news or go to weirdafnews.com and join the Patreon there. Watch the video later tonight. All right, y'all. I hope you're okay. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow as always.